plots in the AFC has been John Elway against Marty Schottenheimer. First one, Schottenheimer coached the Browns. Now the Schottenheimer's in the same division with the Kansas City Chiefs. You've seen it time and time again. Elway breaking Schottenheimer's heart. No, it was set up again today for the same Denver finish. Or was it? We turn a little bit. Neil Smith coming into Kansas City for the first time as a member of the Denver Broncos of the enemy. Now, after a punt pins uh, Denver down at the two, a couple of runs by Terrell Davis banging out quickly towards midfield. And then Davis spins away for number 93, John Browning, in to Kansas City territory. Now, way to the air. Avoids the rush, makes a nice move on Derek Thomas. And it was the catch by Rod Smith right there. Yeah, very Lynn Swan-like as he goes up, maintains his concentration on the ball, and doesn't lose his balance. And then I like the awareness after the catch to realize he still has a live ball, gets up, and gets a few extra yards. So, then early second quarter, Elway to Shannon Sharp. What a great catch in traffic over Dale Carter. Touchdown, it's 10-0 now with the score. 13-0. This is the play that got the Chiefs back. Tamarick Vanover, bounce to the middle, goes to the outside. Only Jason Elam hanging with the play prevents a touchdown, but it sets up a touchdown run by Marcus Allen. 13-0 and a blowout is now 13-7. Derek Thomas, milestone day. He sacked John Elway right there. Sack number 100 for him. He wants the ball. So John, you know, it's my 100 sack. About 17 or against you. Can I have it? Now he says, yeah. <laughs> Second quarter at 13 7 still. And Rich Loose Gannon. Not a great day throwing, but fine, Dane and Hughes. And all of a sudden, big second quarter for the Chiefs. They're up 14 13 at the half. Third quarter. Six times the Chiefs came through to sack Elway. Donnie Edwards recovers the fumble. Yeah, and Donnie will get credit for the sack, but we take another look here. You can see that Dan Williams is the guy who knocks the ball out. And there, right there, you see. Donnie Edwards getting on top of it. Very active day for Edwards in his linebacking post, Tommy. That leads Marcus Allen. Touchdown. Second of the game, 21-13 Chiefs. So, John Elwood and his old backup, now offensive coordinator Gary Kubiak, go through the offense. 43 game-winning drives for Elway, but the Chiefs fans say, you know what? Not today. But it wouldn't be today. 21-19 with two minutes to go. Elway gets the ball. Color of money. Willie Green, sidelines, then a pass interference. And in nine seconds, they've gone 40 yards. While Elam warms up. Elway to Willie Green. Color of money. Gets uh, by Mark McMillan. Goes all the way to the 15-yard line. Dan no. Interesting. Denver stops really going for the goal line. Two plays by Davis. And then, after two timeouts by Schottenheimer, Elway, because he didn't gain yards, see, the clock doesn't start. So Elam nails what looks like a game-winning field goal, but there's time left on the clock. There's a minute left. 22-21 Denver. Neil Smith and Elway think they've got it. After the kickoff return, 54 seconds. Get it. Marcus Allen. Prevent defense. It prevents stopping the Chiefs. All of a sudden, Allen to the 45. A couple other plays as Stoyanovich waits. A few plays later. After a penalty, moves it back, which would have made it a 64-yard attempt. A key 10-yard completion gives Stoyanovich a chance for a 54-yarder. Long enough, high enough, deep enough, is it? It's good. It's good. The Chiefs have beaten the Broncos on Stoyanovich's field goal of 54 yards. Marty watches. You watch it. Made it by that much. Elway leads. Neil Smith. A sea of red ecstatic. As the Chiefs now have beaten the Broncos at Arrowhead five of the last six years. Kansas City now only one back in the AFC West. What a game this was. Chiefs 24 and the Broncos 22. Despite the fact that Kansas City gained only 202 yards in the entire game, they went up the field. More on this later. They went up the field at the end for the winner. Jaguars at Oilers. Of course, the Jaguars have been injury riddled on the defensive line and with left tackle Tony Baselli. Second quarter, second and six from the 20, Eddie George. Second straight thousand yard rushing season. Jimmy Smith had a big day for Jacksonville and Mark Renault was the only uh, psyched enough to find him. And the great thing about Jimmy Smith and McCardell is the way they run into the middle of the field. Great concentration there. Gets his hands up. Knows he's going to take it, but willing to take it to catch the ball. Second and 10 from the 16. 4.20 to go in the second quarter. Brunel. Keenan McCardell. 
Touchdown, and watch this. He winds. He fires. 7-0. Jaguar. Third quarter. Brunel. It's going to be nailed as he throws. It's complete to Jimmy Smith. 35 yards. Plus more because of a flag, Tom. Well, roughly the pass on James Roberson. But as you watch him, we take another look here. This is very close as he's releasing the ball. And right there, they may have called a left forearm, but that's an awfully tight call by the official. Eddie George has left the game after 49 yards with an apparent concussion. It's 14 to 3. But Tennessee with some trickery. McNair the pitch to Rodney Thomas. Willie Davis to Frank Wycheck. A good throw, an even better catch. They missed a two-point conversion, but they're within 5, 14, 9. Now it's 17, 9. Jeff Fisher looking for more trickery. McNair, Wycheck to Ronnie Harmon. The old hook and ladder. 24 yards on the play. One Hail Mary, incomplete. One last Hail Mary. Watch the, how nicely McNair lays it in there. Tommy, what do the Jaguars need to do? Lock it down! Well, they pick it off. They, Dave Thomas picked it <laughs> off. One of the McKenzie brothers. How's it going, eh? And the Jaguars beat the Oilers 17-9. First time in the six games between these two teams that the home team has actually won. But that's not news because Jacksonville has now won 12 in a row at home. Well, they are really, really tough. Well, Tommy, let's go back to Denver. And look, it's always easier to look afterwards, but it's almost as if, at least to me, Denver played prevent offense and prevent defense in the last two minutes. They did get the field goal. But I don't know. They played it too safe. Well, I think it might have cost them the game. Do you agree? First, and, I do agree. First and foremost, let's give credit to Stoyanovich for making yep. the kick of the 54-yarder. But certainly the Broncos lacked some killer instinct if, at the end of the football game. Once they had the position, field goal position, they basically killed the clock, forced Kansas City to use up their timeouts. And yet, if they had gotten a, one first down or gotten into the end zone, obviously they win the football game. And then defensively, you saw the three-man rush. Eight people back in coverage. You have to know defensively, if we cover the sidelines, they catch the ball in the middle of the football field, time will run out on the last play of the game, and you win. And those things did not happen. Well, so now the Chiefs within one in the AFC West, that becomes a competitive division now down the stretch, rather than Denver with a three-game lead. So, when we return, Seahawks and Saints. That had a tricky ending and a tricky beginning for the Seahawks. Redskins and Cowboys. That had a big time finish for Emmett and company. Slow <laughs> motion most of the time. Of course, these guys have been breaking down the coaching video all week, and they'll take you right inside and break down this weekend's most critical matchups. We start in the Northland. The Dallas Cowboys have beaten the Green Bay Packers eight consecutive games. In fact, the last seven have been at Texas Stadium, knocking the Green Bay Packers out of the playoffs three years in a row. Now the Dallas Cowboys are trying to hang on in that playoff picture. They go to Lambeau Field, and this looks like a great one, Merrill. Yeah, well, I think it's going to be a great one. And the Green Bay Packers need to thank Troy Aikman for making this a more exciting game. If it's not for Troy Aikman, the Dallas Cowboys don't win that game in Washington. I talked to a lot of the players and coaches, and the, the drive, the 97-yard drive that tied the football game up, mm -hmm. Troy Aikman came into the huddle, and he said, listen, guys, we're going to take this one play at a time. We're going to drive this down, and we're, we're going to tie this ball game up. And they did just that. And he was the guy who was the difference in those drives. He's the guy that made the plays. Then at the end of the game, when they kicked the winning field goal, Troy Aikman stand on the sideline, holding these teammates' hands, jump with joy. You just don't see that from the Dallas Cowboys during the regular season. Well, Troy Aikman clearly is the heartbeat of the Dallas Cowboys offense. And the Green Bay Packers know this. I went back to last year's game and looked at Fritz Schirmer's defensive scheme. And in that game, he played his base 4-3. He mixed in the 3-4 defense. He brought the strong safety Leroy Butler on the blitz. He brought the free safety Eugene Robinson on the blitz. He played bump and run. He played zone. He tried everything to break the rhythm of Troy Aikman, and he was not successful doing it. This week, it could be even tougher. Gilbert Brown has a sore ankle. Reggie White has a sore back. Fritz Schirmer better be at his best in scheming in this one. And when you look at the film, I mean, Gilbert Brown is the difference maker. He's not a playmaker, but he forces that running game to all the playmakers in Green Bay, and that'll be the difference as to whether or not Dallas can run the football against the Packers. You go back to their last game, they hold the Green Bay Packers and Brett Favre to seven points. Dave Campo the Dallas defensive coordinator does a really nice job scheming this team. They win even more than their opponents do. The Dallas Cowboys, who have beaten the Packers eight times in a row, have only their playoff hopes at stake. The Packers have their pride. If the Packers lose, Mike Lopega, there's a season that's already been disappointing turn into something close to a disaster. Close to a disaster. I mean, they can fall to second or third place in what has turned out to be maybe the best division in, in football. I still think that as much as this game needs to the defending champion, it's, it's more dramatic for the Dallas Cowboys as a part of what could be their last stand, which began 
Last Sunday was what I thought was the moment of the season so far, their 97-yard drive against the Redskins. Clearly their season was on the line. And for the first time in a long time, in a game that they had to win, Aikman looked like Aikman, Irvin looked like Irvin, Emmett looked like Emmett, and they won the game. Now, does that carry over to Lambeau? It's hard to make it carry over to Lambeau, but I think it's going to be a great game today. One thing that's defined the uh, Dallas decline and fall this year is their road record. They're one and right. five on the road, which puts them in the same league with Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> of course, in Lambeau, the Packers have now won 24 games in a row, yeah. including including postseason games. Yeah. But yes, go true. ahead. You give me the the, that, absolutely true. And and but there's a psych thing here. The the Dallas Cowboys are and to a man convinced that the Packers have borrowed their title. I don't care yes. what the record is. I don't care what's going on. This is the game they circle on their calendar. Oh, you guys say we always play you down here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're going into your place. It's only November. It's going to be in the 20s. Big deal. It's not as if the Cowboys haven't played in weather like this before. It's not going to be horrendous, as far as we know. 1-800-HAIR-CLUB. Want to go to the Super Bowl with ESPN? Play ESPN's punt, pass, and win. Watch the Giants versus the Redskins Sunday at 8. Tell us which team punted first and which team had the most passing yardage in the first half, and you could be going long all the way to San Diego. To score, call 1-800-643-8000 or touchdown on ESPN Sports Zone. Go behind the scenes with ESPN at the Super Bowl and win $1,000 from Visa. Play ESPN's punt, pass, and win presented by Visa, the official card of the NFL. Well, the Eagles and the Ravens, a short drive down 95. I guess the winner, what were they playing for, Delaware? Because uh, that's kind of in the middle there, Philadelphia <laughs> and Baltimore. Delaware and who can't get kicked in the teeth. I mean, last week, both teams, it was, that was ugly. You know, the Eagles looked in the mirror this week and saw the Ravens. Both were victims of a drive-by national TV primetime mugging. Baltimore assaulted by a Steeler team 37 to zip last Sunday. Now, the game so bad, Ravens committed five penalties in the first four minutes and threw four interceptions the first 17 minutes. The Eagles accosted in a dark alley by the Niners Monday night, giving up eight sacks, 39 sacks all season. That's as many as they gave up all last year. So what do they do? Hey, let's give Bobby Hoying his first NFL start ever, huh? Early on, Welcome to the show, youngster. Jamie Sharper brought the funk and the noise. His second sack of the year, TJ opened up the floodgates. Yeah, then it was Michael McCrary. The thing to remember here is that Coach Rose thought that Hoying would offer him more mobility in the pocket, run the 4740. He did not get out of that pocket. And then rookie Peter Boulware, boo yeah, third time Hoying has been sacked, TJ. And right there again, you see the collapsing of the pocket, him trying to take a look, Hoying, and not getting that second look. Four first half sacks in Hoying. Second half, though, Hoying representing 13 yard pass to former Patriot, former Bear Michael Timpson. Timpson's only catch. Two plays later, Charlie Garner, straight butter. First touchdown of the year for the little guy. We're tied at 10. 26 seconds ago, fourth and short for Baltimore. Tester Birdie wanted some love. He wanted holding. He got nothing, TJ. Yeah, and Willie Clark here does a good job of holding but not holding. Doesn't hold long enough to get the call from the official. Ravens lose the lose ball and down. Philly with the pass. Bobby Hoying for the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, no. Incomplete. We are going to overtime in OT. Third and short for Baltimore. Hand off to Ernest Biner. Short of the first down. Biner only two carries in the game. 53 yard field goal for the wins for the Ravens. No. It's over. No good. Eagles with the ball. Seven seconds up in OT. Hoying spikes it to kill the clock. Called for a false start. So Chris Bonio, 40 yarder. Oh, that's ugly. Boom, that's ugly. Hey. Hey. Gray Road says, hey. Hey. Everybody, hey. Hey. 10 10 game. First tie game in the NFL since 1989 when the Chiefs played the team the Ravens used to be, the Browns. That game was also 10-10. Philly lost their first home game Monday today. It's the first road game they did not lose, even though they tied. Ravens rookie Jay Graham subbing for Bam Morris, 35 carries, 154 yards rushing. 